take kids that are at risk um, not to graduate, you know, after school activities and mentorship is what's going to lead to success. I guess that's a simple solution, but the problem with that is you have to take kids that already don't like school, tell them to stay after school, and then hang out with a bunch of adults. And so, you know, that's why a lot of people struggle. How do you get that done? And so as I started really just trying to figure that out myself, I kind of dove deep in what I know how to do. I grew up in uh, the Mission District of San Francisco. I grew up around low riding. That was my thing. So I knew that when I was a kid, the low rider bike um, really attracted me. I knew that these kids that I was working with a lot of times, they had already identified as Chicanos, Hispanic American, which is a subculture in itself. And there was a car culture, especially when you look at California, the car customizing capital of the world. It was a hot rod culture at the time. Well, hot rods were very expensive. The guys in the neighborhoods, the Hispanic neighborhoods, knew that maybe they couldn't do that. The hot rod at the time was a gasser style car, which meant it was lifted up real high and it was really fast. And so the guys in the barrio said, you know what, we can't do that. So why don't we do our own thing and we go low and slow. So instead of going super high, we're gonna slam our car to the ground. Instead of going super fast, we're gonna go super slow. And so that became an identity piece for these young uh, Chicanos to say, hey, this is our car culture. This is who we identify as. And it kind of led to what um, eventually started morphing into more customizing and the cars were so low that they would get tickets all the time. And so what somebody uh, realized was that they could take hydraulics from an aircraft, put them into the car, and you could hit a switch and lift the car up. So when somebody, you know, when the police would drive by and they would see the car super low, by the time they pull them over, the car was already high again. Uh, you know, so that, that, that kind of uh, came out of a necessity and then it grew to hydraulics being more modified to what you see today with cars getting, you know, almost flipping backwards or flipping backwards because of the amount of hydraulics they have. But low riding got twisted up and, and into the gang culture when gangster rap became popular. And I feel that that's what happened in the Midwest specifically. For us in California, low riding has always been a family culture thing. I mean, we would, you would use it as a gang prevention because you could not be in a car club and be in a gang. Um, the, the car club would never allow you to do that because it would hurt the car club. And so it was completely the opposite of that. On Sundays, you'd go cruising, you'd go to picnics, you'd be with your family. And I think the biggest piece about low riding to me is that it does represent that subculture and when you tell a kid to tell you what success looks like they will describe something that does not look like them it doesn't look like their uncles it doesn't look like their brothers and when you do tell them, because of that mindset they feel that they have to change everything about themselves to be successful and that's hurtful to an identity when you feel like i can't be myself i have to pretend to be somebody else and i'm never going to be comfortable in this pretend world because i don't have the foundation of that world and i don't know how to navigate it and so a lot of kids just decide not to enter that world but when we can tell a kid you can be successful you can get a doctorate degree you can be somebody and you can keep your culture you can keep your low riding. I think that really encourages kids to keep continue to move forward because they know they don't have to drop their identity and who they are. And I think that's what you see here with these kids. You know, they come every week. If we can't meet for whatever reason, they're texting and when can we meet, when can we meet? Because they get to come here and express themselves and relax. And every single one of these kids is on track to graduate. We have a 100% graduation rate with most of our kids gone off to college. That doesn't happen, you know, just because it happens because the kids all of a sudden felt comfortable understanding that education can be part of their world as well and their world can be part of education.